A reef is not just a place. Not just a collection of corals. Not just a scientific phenomenon. It is a subjective experience. Something that comes out of an engagement between the human and the place. Something that's part of the mind and the heart as much as it is the physical object. As a historian, I find it so strange that while we know a lot about the natural history of this beautiful place, its reefs, its sea creatures, its caves, we still know so very little about the human history of the reef. This book will take us across the length and breadth of the Great Barrier Reef to explore how humans, past and present, have shaped this marvellous global icon, and also how Australia as a nation has been shaped by it. Well, Cook lucked out, didn't he? If he hadn't landed on that other side, yeah. the story may have been different. Yeah, it was. It's a history found in some of the remotest places on Earth. This 14-year-old boy has been abandoned, and he's in a place like he's never seen before. It is utterly vast. What we've been imagining is a myth. The man who created that myth for the Great Barrier Reef was Ted Banfield. They see among the crowd of Aborigines on the shore a wild-looking, copper-coloured man. At once, they recognise him as a white man. And it's a history we almost never had. We nearly lost it to someone who wanted to mine it for oil and gas. And it was only three concerned citizens who mobilised to save it at that point. On the face of it, Judith Wright and her colleagues were ill-qualified to fight this campaign. But they said, in effect, bugger that. These were the men and women, the Australians and the foreigners, the saints and the sinners, the scientists, artists and castaways who've shaped our ideas and our feelings about the greatest marine environment this planet has ever known.